The top 23 tips for Airbnbs in 2023. Number one, guys, make sure you stick to primary locations. In real estate, we identify real estate in three different areas. We got primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary markets are typically the city where everybody wants to live, where it's typically more expensive because it's just better at everything. Maybe it's more central, maybe it's right next to the beach or near the downtown, but it's that strong primary market. Again, it is typically more expensive to either buy or rent, but that is where all the action takes place. And then if you go 30 minutes you know, east or west to go somewhere more affordable, you may find yourself in a secondary location. If you go another 30 minutes, right, like an hour away from that primary location, you may end up in what we call a tertiary location. Now, typically in real estate, primary locations hold their value much stronger as far as purchasing value, like the appreciation, the actual value of the home they hold their value stronger. Now, the same thing happens with Airbnbs. When you're actually operating Airbnbs, especially in times like today in a recession, primary markets outperform those in secondary and tertiary. So make sure you guys stick to primary locations. The second one is make sure when you're looking at launching an Airbnb, make sure you run the numbers through the AirDNA Rentalizer. This will let you know if your short-term rental has the potential to actually be profitable before you sign any leases. Number three, make sure you call the local building department in the city of the short-term rental that you wanna launch and you first verify whether you need a permit and if you can get a permit, how much it costs, how long it takes. You don't wanna make the mistake of launching in an area where the numbers look great just to find out that you're getting a $500 bill you know, every couple of days or every couple of weeks because you're launching in an area that you shouldn't have launched. Only launch in areas where you can get a permit. The next one is make sure you offer a great quality experience. I like to go for properties that are really top notch. Again, when I started six years ago, I didn't have the capital to go for the best properties, but now that I do today, I want the best properties in the best locations with the best amenities. Make sure these properties are clean, fully equipped, and that they have all the amenities to provide a five-star experience. The next one is make sure you are utilizing professional photography. Do not cut corners in this area. Hire a real estate photographer that has that wide lens and that can get you the best photography because that is where we do all of our marketing and that is how people determine whether they stay at your property or somebody else's. Next, you wanna make sure that you price your short-term rentals competitively. Even if you have the best property in the area, you don't wanna be twice as expensive because even though people may wanna stay there, there's a lot of people, especially today, that are shopping for different Airbnbs to stay at and, they're, and they may be on a budget. So just make sure you look at what everybody else is charging and make sure your prices are comparable. The next thing is make sure that your listing is optimized. Something that is super important is that the words that you use in your description and in your title truly matter to the actual algorithm because there's a lot of people who go on Google and they write a description of what they're looking for and your property actually might pop up because believe it or not, Airbnb does a lot of search engine optimization. The next one is to respond promptly. I tell my virtual assistant to respond to all inquiries in five to 10 minutes. In fact, Airbnb promotes listings who log in frequently and to respond in a timely manner to each and every guest. Another thing is added value. You may have some guests who want to extend their stay. And personally, I like to offer a discount if anybody stays for seven days at a time or even for 30 days at a time. So make sure you also take that into consideration because the reality is the less check-ins you have, the easier it is to operate your short-term rental. So make sure you create those incentives. The next one is make sure you keep your property updated. I recommend that every two to three months, you personally, you or your manager personally walks through the properties. You'd be surprised, um, you know, when I was first starting this business, I wouldn't go visit the properties. Um, now I obviously have a manager that visits the properties every two to three months, but back then I wouldn't visit them and I would go like six months later and I'm like, oh my God, this property needs a paint job. It needs some loving. And it was starting to reflect on my reviews. So again, make sure every two to three months you physically walk the property 
just to make sure if you need to make any adjustments or repairs or improvements, you do so. Next one, encourage your guests to leave a review. You need to express the importance of being able to attract great guests like them so that you can continue to grow your business. So we always like to ask them for a review on their checkout message. We also put it in the welcome books. And we've even gotten to the point where I've had my virtual assistant call the guest, check in to see how their experience was, and then asking them if they could kindly leave an honest review. Again, we are in a social proof economy. If 100 people say your property is amazing, guess what? Everybody else will believe it. This next one is one of my favorites. Have your cleaning crew leave a personalized welcome note with the main guest's name by the entrance. People love to be able to show up to the properties and see their name and it says like, hey, welcome Jorge and the Contreras family. It's just one of those personalized touches that people really appreciate and it can go a long way. Remember, first impressions are anything and you only get one opportunity to make a great first impression. The next thing is to be flexible with check-in times and check-out times. Now, this is easier when you have one or two properties. Now, when you start growing and you have four, five, six, especially if you have the same cleaning crew cleaning all of them in one area, it does make it almost impossible to offer flexibility. But when you're just starting, if you're able to, it's only going to help your reviews and guests will definitely appreciate that flexibility. The next one is to use technology in order to streamline, automate, and optimize. So for example, you can use platforms like Beyond Pricing in order to automate the pricing. And they look at airlines, hotels, and events in the area, and ultimately they can help you price your properties properly based on supply and demand. You can also use platforms like Guesty if you want to host on multiple platforms and have the ability to sync the calendars. You can use platforms like Turnover BNB in order to hire cleaning staff for whenever you acquire new properties and you don't have somebody to clean it. You can actually post your property on there, the job, and people will actually bid the property in order for you to find different cleaners. The next one is to offer a seamless check-in experience. Now, I know you think you're super awesome, and I think you're pretty awesome too, but trust me, these guests don't wanna meet you. Make sure you set up a keyless entry in order to automate the entrance and exit of each and every guest. For this next one, make sure you stay up to date with industry standards just to make sure if there's any updates in the market or if you notice that other people are starting to do something trendy in order to create a better experience. So make sure you stay up to date with everything going on in the short-term rental industry. The next thing is you want to build a network of trusted vendors. You don't want to have a different landscaper, a different pool person, a different cleaner each and every time. Ideally, you want to pick a team and that becomes what I call your power team. The same landscaper, the same pool person, the same person that cleans your Airbnb and this way they leave it the same exact way each and every time so that it also matches your marketing in the photography. Next, be proactive with guest communications. The guests are going to have questions before, during, and even after their stay. Again, make sure you respond in a timely manner. I recommend five to 10 minutes. You can always hire a virtual assistant on upwork.com who already has experience handling communications with short-term rentals. Next is to offer local experiences. In your welcome book, you can actually create a list of all the things there is to do in your area, and then you can laminate it and put it in a welcome book so that it doesn't get ruined. Guests love showing up to the property, and a lot of times they're so busy traveling and getting ready for their trip that they forget to look at what's going on in the area. And this is a great touch that will be highly appreciated by your guest. If you guys are enjoying this list so far, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Another thing I recommend is utilizing social media in order to actually promote your listings. Social media is free. All you need to do is invest a few minutes a day and you can even post your pictures. You can even make a video and you can even post the actual booking link to your Airbnbs on your Instagram bio. Again, this is free marketing that's only going to increase your occupancy. Next is we want to provide excellent customer service. The reality is things are going to happen. And it's not so much about things happening, but how quickly and efficiently are you responding and handling the things that come up? Again, we've had situations where let's say there was a miscommunication between our manager, VA, and the cleaner, 
and maybe the guest showed up and the property wasn't clean and we were able to handle it. We said, hey guys, can we offer to pay for your lunch? Just give us about 45 minutes and we're gonna turn over this unit while you guys go get some lunch. And again, most of the time that's worked. This doesn't happen all the time, but it has happened a few times in the last six years of hosting well over a thousand guests. So again, customer service is everything. The next thing, and this is honestly one of the most important things, if not the most important, make sure your property is super clean. The reality is people are gonna have kids who are gonna be crawling on the floor. You don't want there to be any dirt or debris or roaches or just anything. You wanna make sure the property is squeaky, clean, you could literally eat off the floor. Not really, but you get what I'm saying. Finally, create a community. One of the things I love to do is set up a little book in an area where guests can actually leave a review. And what we have found is a lot of guests will actually sit there after writing their review or before they write a review, and they will start looking at what other people said and what kind of incredible experiences and memories they all created. With that being said, guys, make sure you guys like this video. Check out one of my other videos here on my page, and I will see you guys on the next one.